Loki, kind of a beautiful day to work on a car. Okay, so this right here is my mom's 2007 Ford Escape Hybrid. Now, there's nothing really much notable about this car except for the fact that it's probably the perfect daily driver. And the fact that the hybrid version of the Escape doesn't get a temperature gauge, which is kind of a weird emission by Ford. Now, this thing's been running for 163,000 miles. I never really thought about it. And it's not something I really cared about until recently when the serpentine belt on this car snapped because the AC compressor seized up. Now, when it snapped, I was under the impression that I could probably get this thing to, uh, like, you know, limp at home. Because this car doesn't have a power string pump and doesn't have an alternator. Uh, the only catch is that the water pump is driven by the serpentine belt. Now, because it didn't have a temp gauge, because it has this charge assist gauge, I didn't want to push my luck, right? So, I, I kind of pulled over and called the tow truck to bring it home. And I decided from that point on, this thing needs a temp gauge, like, badly. So, I picked up those two little boxes over there. I've been seeing all these, like, really weird little OBD2 related gauges on Amazon for a while. I actually ended up getting one for my friend a while ago. But, this time we need one for this car. Because, I'm hoping that this little guy has a temp gauge in it. Which I believe it does. But yeah, so there it is. A little nice and tiny actually way smaller than I thought it would be this is a car easy to installed Wii Y E head up display pit, uh, LED on a pillar trim basically it's an OB2 gauge that goes on the pillar and should tell me temperature and other things right. and it even comes with a dual trim removal tool that is actually really awesome because I'm gonna need that on that pillar I'm going to pull this out of the box, my baggie. So, I tried looking it up online and finding YouTube videos about this, but I couldn't really find much information. So, from what I can tell so far, that is supposed to be a photo sensor. And then, uh, these are little buttons. So, there's OK, forward, back, menu, and then the power off button. Or power on, power off. And then, the OBD port connects up there. It's actually a really tiny screen, like maybe one inch or less. And it has a little 3M pad right here. Actually, it looks to be real 3M, which could be impressive if it is. And the instructions right here. So, let's get this on that pillar. So, step one for me to get it on here is probably going to be to pop these little guys off, which I will use that provided trim removal tool for. I'm realizing how hot it is right now. Probably should have done this early in the morning, but you know. This is something This is something I'm really happy I decided to do. Uh, to actually just test fit it to see where I would put it. So the problem with this thing is that the pillars on this car are kind of small, mainly because this is like pretty old and before all that rollover protection stuff became required. And there isn't really a good spot to put it anywhere, to be honest with you. Like, it's honestly a little too big to mount anywhere, as you can probably see right there. Like, it just doesn't fit anywhere on this pillar. It just, no. So I decided to keep it right there, which isn't as cool as I would like. But it's going to provide information that's going to be kind of important. And it's kind of perfectly angled towards the driver while driving. Like that. So again, not ideal, but better than nothing. So I'm probably still going to need to take this guy off. I'll probably bunch up the extra wire and put it all in here. And then just have this little OBD2 splitter. Yeah, perfect spot for it. Right in there. Mint. Oddly enough, this kind of works perfectly right here because you can actually see the OBD2 port from here. And I didn't want to lose the functionality of the OBD2 port with that thing plugged in, so I ended up getting this as well. Uh, what this is, is kind of like a pass-through cable. It's literally an OBD2 plug there with a actual uh, plug into the port. So I can still access the OBD2 port with this thing plugged in. Plug this guy right here. Snake it up into here. Actually, you can see the OBD2 port a little bit better now, too. Okay, so I just have it plugged in right now, just so I can see how to do this. And uh, a couple things. I tried turning it on with the key, didn't turn it on with the key. Uh, then I realized that there's a power button on the side. That creates a slight issue, because I was on the impression that this would turn on and off with the car. Uh, but it does not. The key is out of the OBD2 port. OBD2 port and currently this guy is running and apparently my battery is dying. 
So let's see if there's a way to change everything in these settings. Ink menu? No. I'm gonna need to read some instructions on this guy. Good thing I turned it on before I just had to like permanently plug it in or, and cut stuff up. Okay, so here are the instructions right here. Uh, power switch on. Okay, that's basically the diagram. Short press M button to enter menu. Short press again to exit settings. So that seems simple enough. And no function display, power, yada, yada, all the troubleshooting shit. So, what I discovered is that when I go straight to OBD2, right? Uh, let's go OB2, click OK, that's all I get, right? And when I try to press the M button, nothing. It just gives me a straight uh, battery voltage and that's it. But if I turn it off and turn it back on and go to GPS mode and then click OK, there's that, right? That gives me my speed, which is apparently by the GPS. So if I go to settings, let's see if it'll do anything. Nope. You return, language set, angle screen switch, sound switch, nope, don't care about that. Cool alarm, that's what I need. RPM alarm, battery alarm, speed adjust, speed offset, bat adjust, engine size, fuel adjustment, brightness, unit speed, unit some power diff, sleep voltage, sleep voltage, that might be important. Never mind. What's that doing? Sleep voltage. Click OK. RPM. Calm. 11 volt. 11.1. Oh, okay, I see it. I see it. Calm. Let's try that. Factory set. Time adjust. Speed unit. But yep, that's mile an hour. That's good. C CWT. That's Fahrenheit. So it's probably coolant. Brightness. Fuel adjust. Engine size, let's go 2.3 liter. There's that. Battery just. Okay, nope, that's back. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. I'm gonna go through the menu, see what I can find. Okay, so I got the gauge cluster in and pretty much at a position where I kind of like it. It's pretty well perfect for line of sight. Uh, a couple things I've noticed about this. One, uh, to get to read engine coolant temp, you actually have to get it to be in, uh, you know, regular mode if or have the ignition running. Now, this particular car, you can see that those are the correct uh, things. ETC is engine coolant temp. I believe OIT is oil temperature. Those are the only things I really wanted this gauge for because, again, no gauge. I did run the car for a little bit and it did show that the engine coolant temp was rising but I didn't run it for that long because again, no water pump or AC compressor serpentine belt in general. Uh, time, there you go. Basically everything else works and to get this to function and turn off with the actual key, you have to switch it for calm. So what you do is you go to the menus, go down to settings. Now, once you're in settings, you can pretty much change a whole host of things from your language uh, to a bunch of other stuff. What you want to do is go down to, let's see, speed adjust, speed offset, engine size, fuel adjustment, brightness. Uh, oh, you want to change this to Fahrenheit if you're in America, because it comes to Celsius. Speed unit, miles an hour, change that. See some distance. Don't know what that is. Power off timer. So this is set for five seconds. That is the quickest that you can get this thing to turn off. It'll go to 300 seconds if you go any lower. So there's that. Nope, oh, no wrong one. And then down to sleep voltage. Now, when it comes to sleep voltage, it's actually pretty weird. It'll run either off the RPM of the engine, which isn't good for this car because it is a hybrid. Uh, calm which is specifically for cars with push button start and a hybrid system and the rest is based off of voltage so i believe the logic is that when this vehicle begins to run uh obviously the alternator will put the voltage up higher and then you will have you know a reference for when this thing to, to turn on and turn off why you don't have a simple accessory uh option is lost on me but this does work it's set to calm right now. 
time it just factory set but yeah that's all the stuff you need nope not that one fuck that one that's not the one i want i want the one with that that's all i need well actually my mom would probably prefer no but yeah those are all the different options So this is probably the unit that, or this screen, has the most information that you need. I don't really need time, don't really need distance, uh, no, minutes, that's how long the motor's been running. Time is apparently the time, speed, those are four things I don't need at all. It would be nice if I could get a screen with just compass, and I could actually change these other top four, but from what I've seen so far, the only two I can change are these bottom two. I'm not too worried about it, it is what it is, it does the job. Uh, it is fairly accurate, or at least uh, it's fairly responsive, I'll say that. The only two things I have uh, that are kind of irritating is, again, here's me shutting it off. And here's how long it takes for it to turn off. So, having it turn off on time, or at least a decent amount of speed, was one of the, my biggest concerns. And when I turn off, when I open the door, it, it'll stay on for an odd amount of time. It should have shut off by now, but it didn't. But when I open the door, one, two... Three, four, and ah, there it goes. One thing I've noticed, it is more likely to turn off when I open the door. And when you turn the ignition back on, it doesn't turn back on automatically. You actually have to press a button right there. There, it still has the voltage, and now it loads up and everything. As long as this doesn't drain the battery of this car, or the 12 volt battery, I'm good with it. Overall, it's nice. I like it. It has a couple little gripes, but for 35 bucks, it does the job. I call it a win.